Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye, you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Jesus now deals with the equally dangerous tendency of those who have few possessions, worry. Take no thought means, do not be anxious. This word means to be so disturbed about material needs that we distrust God and are distracted from faithfully doing his will. Anxious care is the direct opposite of faith. Therefore, even the poor are not to worry needlessly about what they should eat, drink, or wear. The question is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Indicates the inner mental stability must come from the spirit of of a man and not from the outward physical provisions. To set one's heart on material possessions or to worry about the lack of them is to live in perpetual insecurity and to deprive oneself of the spiritual blessings of God. Jesus illustrates his point by referring to objects in nature that were immediately at hand, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. The key point of this passage is found in the phrase, are ye not much better than they? And shall he not much more clothe you? The Bible clearly teaches that God is the creator and sustainer of nature. Worry and anxiety are related to the length of one's life. In the phrase, add one cubit unto his stature, a cubit is a measurement of 18 inches. However, this reference is probably not to one's actual height, but to the length of his life. The term stature may mean age. Thus, the idea seems to be that a man cannot add the smallest measure to the span of his life by worrying. This state of anxiety is related to having little faith. Faith is total confidence in the provision of God. This portion of the Sermon on the Mount is summarized by the statement, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The disciples who have pledged their allegiance to the king must continue seeking the kingdom and his righteousness. The present imperative form of the verb indicates a continual or constant seeking. The contrast between the spiritual and the material is again emphasized. The believer is to seek is to seek first the righteousness that is characteristic of God's kingdom, and then all these things, material things, shall be added to him. When our priority is, is spiritual, God will take care of the material. For where God guides, he provides. We need not even worry about tomorrow, for sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This means that each day has its own troubles and challenges to be responsibly handled without worrying about the hypothetical problems that could arise tomorrow.